and by the end of this video you would have created an amazing AI application wherein you can scan an image to spawn a dragon and move it around using a joystick and the best part is that you'll be able to develop this application in about 15 minutes so let's get started all right so to begin with you need to have your unity software downloaded and installed so if you don't have it already then you can visit this website unity.com downloads and click on download for windows now this is going to download the unity hub software which is going to look something like this and it helps you manage all your projects and it helps you manage the different versions of editor that you have and for each of the editor it will let you add different modules that you need as per your requirement so once you have the unity hub then you can scroll down till you find the link for download archive in the download archive you need to click on download lts releases and that's because they don't have any bugs and even if they are there are uh, updates that rectify them and the version that we're going to use is going to be 2021.3.6 so make sure from the drop down you select 2021.3 and scroll all the way down till you find the version 6. now make sure to download this and i'm suggesting you to download the same version as me and that's because if you find any errors then it'll be easy for me to help you guys uh, fix it now since i already have the editor it's saying that i have it so let's skip that part all right, so once you have your editor installed, then you can click on settings, add modules, and then you need to make sure that you have these three modules installed. So the Android will support with Android SDK and DK tools and OpenJDK. So you need to have these three installed. And once that's done, you can go to projects and create a new project. We'll, uh, from the drop down, if you have different editor version, make sure you're using 2021.3.6. We'll use the 3D core render pipeline. We'll name our project as uh, AR uh, image tracking image tracking and click on create project all right so we have a unity project open and the first thing that we need to do is download all the packages and resources that we'll be needing to create this AI application so let's go to windows package manager and let's go to unity registry here search for ar foundation so this is the one version 4.2.6 click on install now along with this we need another package which is going to be the AR core so you can select the AR core XR plugin and click on install once again. Now let's go ahead and download all the resources that we need to create this application and the first resource that we need is an image that can be detected. So I'm using this particular image from Game of Thrones and then once the image is detected we need a model that has to be spawned. For that I'm using this dragon asset and uh, finally once you have your model spawned you should be you should be able to move it around as well and to do that i'm using the joystick pack asset now i'll leave a link for uh, all these three in the description below so you can also download the same all right so now that we have all the assets let's go ahead and import them into unity so for that we'll go to windows package manager and in here let's search for the dragon asset click on import Next, we'll go ahead and import the joystick pack as well. And finally, let's go ahead and import the image. There we go. So now it's time to set up our project. So let's go to file, build settings. And the first thing to do here is to switch to Android platform. So once that's done, you can click on player settings and in the other settings, make sure you uncheck auto graphics API, select the Vulkan API and let's go ahead and remove that. We need to uncheck multi-thread rendering and we'll scroll down, make sure this is level 24. And here we need to change the scripting backend from Mono to IL to CPP. And here we got to make sure to check the ARM64. So these are the settings that you need to do in order to make sure that it runs on your Android device. Next, we need to click on the AR plugin management. Make sure you're on the Android tab and in here, check the AR core. All right, so with that, we have set up our project. Now let's go ahead and set up our scene. Now creating the scene is fairly simple. First thing to do here is to get rid of the main camera and then right click, select XR, select AR session origin. Now this game object comes along with AR camera. Um, that's the reason why we got rid of the main camera. And then there's another game object that we need to add. So to do that, right click, select XR once again and add AR session. So once you have these two, we'll select the AR session origin and add the component AR track image manager. Now this component basically uh, tracks the image and once it's done, it instantiates this prefab that we give, but we're not gonna do it that way. We're just gonna give it an image and then we'll write a separate script which will spawn the prefab once the image is detected. So first thing to do here is to create the serialized uh, library an image library. So we'll right click in the project window, click on create, go to XR and we'll select the image uh, reference image library 
and you can rename it if you like to but i'm going to leave it as it is so click on add image and let's add the image that we have imported here then select the air session origin and drag and drop the image reference library here next add a component we'll create a new script we'll call this as image creator not image creator we we'll call it as prefab creator so prefab creator there we go all right so here we are in visual studios let's go ahead and get rid of this code over here and let's add the package that we'll be using so it's going to be using unity engine dot xr dot ar foundation all right now let's declare all the variables that we need for the script the first one is going to be a serialized field private it's going to be of type game object and it's going to be the dragon prefab dragon prefab and next we need a vector 3 so let's make it a serialized field once again private vector 3 and let's call it as prefab offset now i'll tell you why we need this once we go back into unity but uh, let's just continue in visual studios for now next let's declare another variable which is going to be a private game object of and it's going to be called as dragon and this variable is basically going to store the instantiated prefab and finally we need a variable to store the air track image manager component so it's going to be ar track image manager we'll call it as air track image manager there we go now on enable so when it is uh, enabled the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get the air track image manager component so we'll assign it to this variable air track image manager is going to be equal to game object dot get component AR tracked image manager there we go and then let's subscribe to its event on image changed when the attract image is changed so it's going to be AR tracked image manager dot tracked images changed plus equal to on image on image changed and all you need to do is right click on this and go to quick actions and generate a method so it's going to generate a method for us automatically it's going to be of parameter ar tracked images changed event arcs i know that's long but it's the parameter that's there and it's going to have an obg as the uh, output that we get let's go ahead and get rid of this now in here we want to have for each so for each ar tracked image so for each of the tracked image let's go ahead and rename this as image in obj in this particular obj that we get dot now when it is added for the first time okay so for each of the image inside this obj when it's added for the first time what we want to do is we want to instantiate the dragon prefab so and then store it inside the dragon variable as well so we're going to say it as dragon is going to be equal to instantiate the dragon prefab and in which location do we want it it should be above the image so we're going to call it as image dot transform there we go and then for some reason or for some it could be possible that any model that you're using might have some offset uh, so in order to accommodate that we're going to call it we're going to use dragon dot transform dot position plus equal to the offset value that we have there we go and that that's and that's about it so let's go ahead and save this go back to unity and let's wait for the script to load all right here we need to provide a dragon prefab so let's go ahead and uh, make use of one of these dragon prefab that we already have so we'll go in here we'll go to prefabs and i'm going to use the terror winger and use the blue one so here you can see it's actually quite big and just to give you a reference we'll go ahead and create a cube of a meter size put it at zero so you can see how big this dragon is so we need to reduce its scale so i'm going to reduce it to 0 0.015 0 0.015 and 0 0.015 there we go now this cube is one one meter so for example if i want it to be something like 10 centimeter then this is how big it's going to be let's reset its position so there we go so i think this is a good size to have but you can vary the size as per your requirement let's get rid of the cube here now this blue dragon uh, will set this rotation to zero as well but if you see the ar camera right it's pointing in this particular direction so which means that when this object spawns it's going to look away from the camera so to so to change that we'll have this y as 180 next this uh, prefab also has a uh, animator in place so let's go ahead and open that now here you can see there are so many animations that are there we don't want all of them so let's go ahead and rid of, get rid of these get rid of these now all we need is take off and fly forward so let's go ahead and get rid of these and this and this as well perfect now let's make a transition to here and from here to here so now if i go to scene and press play 
you can see that uh, the dragon is just going to take off and then it's just going to fly around in the same position. Perfect. So we have our prefab ready. Let's go ahead and add that. So we'll go back to here, prefabs and here. Now before you get delete this particular one, make sure to go to override and say apply all. Let's click on blue and make sure it's added. So here you can see that the position and rotation is still the same. So we'll make this zero. We'll make this as 180. Perfect. Now we can get rid of this. Select the AI session origin, drag and drop the blue prefab inside the dragon prefab. Now talking about the offset, so if I bring this back here and if I press play, you can see that the dragon will start flying. Now when it flies and uh, there's some offset and also even here the base, there's some offset to its actual center. Uh, that's the reason why we have uh, offset here. So you can leave it at zero, but um, it's based on trial and testing. So I felt the best one would be point one actually. So this is the offset that I like. So I'm going to get rid of this here again. And that's pretty much it. Now there is one more script that we need. So basically we want to be able to move the dragon around once it's spawned. So to do that, we'll select the dragon, we'll add a component, we'll create a new script, we'll call it as dragon controller. And let's open this. Yeah, and so let's open this and I'll see you in Visual Studio. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and get rid of this code over here. Now, the first thing that we need is a variable to store the speed. So it's going to be serialized speed, private, float, and we'll call it as speed. And then we need uh, two more variables. Our first variable is going to store the fixed joystick component, and the second one is for the rigid body. So let's go ahead and create a private fixed joystick here, and we'll call it as fixed joystick. And let's create another variable for the rigid body component. There we go. We'll call it as rigid body. Now on enable, so when it is enabled, we want to get this particular component right away and so the rigid body as well. Now I'm going to change this name. I'm going to make the B capital. There we go. So fixed rigid, uh, so fixed joystick is going to be equal to find object of type. We, we want the fixed joystick. There we go. So we have that component and we also need the rigid body component. So rigid body is going to be equal to game object dot get component. And let's get the rigid body component. All right, so once we have this in the fixed update, so fixed update, we want to move this, right? So to move it around, first thing that we need to do is um, get the joysticks X and Y value. So we'll have it as float. Float X val is going to be equal to the fixed joystick dot horizontal axis. And the next one is going to be float. Y val is going to be equal to fixed joystick dot vertical. All right, once we have this, then we can define as to which way it has to be moving. So first we'll have the moment, which is going to be a vector three. So vector three movement is going to be equal to new vector three x val comma zero. We don't want the dragon to move up and down. And then we'll finally say y val. So here we are converting the 2D axis into movement along the x and z plane. All right, so once we have the moment, we can uh, make it move in that particular direction. For that, we'll make use of the velocity uh, property of rigid body component. So we'll say rigid body dot velocity is going to be equal to the moment times the speed. Perfect. So now at this particular stage, your dragon will be moving, but it will not face the direction in which it has to move. So in order to do that, we'll say if the x val is not equal to zero and the y val is also not equal to zero. So only in this case, we want to say transform dot Euler angle is going to be equal to new vector three. And here it's going to be the uh, transform, it's going to be transform dot Euler angle dot X. Now, if you think about it, we want the dragon to rotate around the Y axis. So which means that the rotation about X and Z axis remains constant and does not change. So we'll say transform dot Euler angles at X comma so for y we will use the math function so math f math f dot a tan 2 and in here we'll pass in the x val comma y val there we go i think i'll scroll this slightly up here so that you can see as well and zoom out a bit okay so and then multiply this by math f dot radian 2 degree and finally we'll take transform dot euler angles dot z yeah, there we go. So that's about it. Uh, semicolon. Perfect. So now with this script, you should be able to move the player along. So let's save it and go back to Unity. All right. So now let's add the joystick to our scene. To do that, you'll have to right click, 
select UI, select canvas. Next, scroll down. In the canvas scaler, we'll change it from constant pixel size to scale, uh, scale with screen size. And let's change these values. So I think the best values to take would be something like uh, this one. So it's going to be 2160 cross 1080. So this is like almost the standard size of all the modern smartphones that we have. And then let's go to joystick pack prefabs. Then here we have the fixed joystick, drag and drop it inside the canvas. Now you'll be able to see the joystick here. So let's double click on it. And I'm going to increase the scale to two so that it's bigger and easy to use and probably move it slightly above and towards the right here. Yeah, I think so much is fine. The blue prefab has a size of 0.5. We have edited its uh, animation. And here we need to add two more components. The first one is a rigid body. Make sure to uncheck use gravity. And the next one is the dragon controller. And here we'll set the speed to 0.5. And then let's go up here, click on overrides and say apply all so that it gets applied to the prefab. And let's go ahead and remove this. So that's about it. Let's save the scene and let's now build it onto our device. So to do that, you will have to go to file, build settings. And then before you actually build it, you need to connect your device to your laptop or to your PC. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've connected it. You need to enable USB debugging mode. So if you're not sure how that's done, then I'll leave a link for that over here or in the description. So you need to enable USB debugging. So once that's done, you'll, let's refresh here. And here you can, you'll be able to see your device, minus one plus. And then we'll say, click on build and run. We'll right click, create a new folder. We'll call it as builds. We'll call it as builds. There we go. Let's open it. We'll call it as test maybe and save and it's going to take a while and i will see you once it's done building all right so here we have the application running let's go ahead and scan the image and once we have the image scanned we get the dragon prefab and now we can use the joystick to move it around it's super cool and it's so much fun all right so this was a video to show you how quickly you can develop an ar application and uh, you learned about image tracking now if you want to learn in depth and learn more about the AI foundation and its features then you should definitely check out this playlist over here wherein i talk in detail about each of the component and how face tracking works and are all the different things related to ar foundation all right i hope you enjoyed this video if you feel that you have learned something new then uh, i'd highly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe and as usual i will see you in the next one